I'm uh, Dr. Shannon Lee from Dental Vet, so I'm here with Dr. Oliver Lyu from Equine Veterinary and Dental Services, also a dental vet. And today we're going to talk about uh, breeding mares and how we go about that and how we look at pregnancy. Yellow. Okay. Yeah, we're just looking at a at an eight-year-old Australian stock horse mare. Uh, she's due to foal in a couple of months, and we're just checking her pregnancy. We're going to look at the placenta. We're just going to feel that everything's all intact and um, see that everything's on target. We're weighing her while she's in the crush here, and we're just going to talk a little bit about nutrition for her final trimester. So, Oliver, what's the um What's the standard gestation period for a mare? How long is it? Yeah, it's quite variable. It uh, anywhere from 310 to 374 days, with the average being about 345 days. So it does vary a lot between mares. There has been recorded cases of it going up to uh, 400 days of gestation, uh, which is obviously a little bit abnormal, but uh, they still have had live poles up at that time. Okay, and what about the cycle of the mare? You know, how many days from yep. when they begin to cycle? Yeah, yeah. They're basically uh, the the constant thing with mare cycling is that there's about 14 to 16 days in between when they go off heat to coming back on heat, and the length of time that they're on heat varies depending on the time of the year. Early in the season, sort of around August September, they're often on for a longer period. Uh, maybe 10 to 14 days, and as the day lengths get longer, their cycle gets shorter. So often by the peak daylight times around sort of December, January, they're often um, you know as short as four to seven days. So the you don't you think of it more of the time that they're on heat, it shortens as the day lengths get longer. But the time in between going off heat and coming back on heat, that's the quite reliable thing that it's 14 to 16 days. So. Uh, there's no one hard and fast rule, but that's a good guide. Oliver, do you just have some simple tips and advice for maybe owners of horses who are new to foaling and aren't sure what to expect when their mare's about to have its first foal? Yeah, I guess uh, it, it's a, fortunately horses are pretty good at foaling. Uh, there's a, a lot less incidence of foaling problems, uh, but the problem is with horses, if they do have a foaling problem, it's often catastrophic and needs to have all hands on deck. So it's a good idea for the owners to have a game plan uh, when their mare's coming up to do to foal. Uh, and also during the pregnancy for the owners to check the mare, you know, ideally every day, depending on how accessible they are to the mare. Uh, but they should be looking at things like looking at the udder, um, seeing that she's not bagging up, getting an udder prematurely. They should be having a look under a tail to see that there's no vulval discharge and also just seeing the mare's general demeanour, the size, those sorts of things. When the mare, it's very hard to actually predict when a mare's going to fold. You'll read in textbooks about them waxing up, that means there's 24 hours to go, but that's quite unreliable. Mares can uh, wax up, you know, days or weeks before, they can loosen up, sometimes they the udder might come and go a little bit. Uh, mares do sort of try and find a, find a place to foal. They know about it, but sometimes they don't give away. And it's important that you've got your mare in the paddock, you want to foal them in sort of a good, at least two to four weeks before foaling, uh, so that they can work out where they're going to do it. Uh, you can do things like looking at the milk excretion to see um, there's kits available that you can actually use to help predict foaling. Once that mare starts foaling, uh, there's three stages of, of parturition. The first stage can last sort of 12 to 24 hours, and that's when you start getting a bit of uterine contraction. Um, things are starting to happen inside. Once the membranes appear, you'll see a white membrane first. It should be white, that's the amnion. It shouldn't be the placenta, which is red. Um, you should see the white bag first. In, in between seeing the white bag and the foal on the ground, uh, there should be you know 20 to 30 minutes total. And usually it's the mare usually lays down to do it. Uh, you can get uh, mare foaling collars to help you uh, to not miss that foaling, and they're, they're certainly a good idea. Uh, when the foal is delivered, 
uh, you don't break the cord straight away, you let the, the foal break that itself. If the membranes are over the foal's nose, you can certainly uh, pull them off, but otherwise you should stay back away from the whole process, let the mare and foal bond. Uh, the mare will often um, turn around and start acknowledging the foal and, uh, and then get up and start licking it and that's the whole bonding process and there should be minimal human intervention in that time unless there's a problem. Once the foal's out it should be standing in one hour, start suckling in two hours, so if it's not doing those two things something's not quite right and you need to start thinking about um, calling your vet. The membranes should be passed within, usually they're passed within one to two hours. If they're still hanging out after two hours, certainly contact your vet and get a plan going as to how you're going to manage that because uh, membranes that stay hanging out of a mare's vulva, they're going to be a source of bacteria traveling up the membranes and into the uterus can cause a uterine infection and that can be catastrophic in the way of causing uh, toxemia and also laminitis. So you can have a horrendous result if you don't attend to those things. So I guess uh, it's not a bad idea, you know, if it's your first mare that's foaling or you don't have a lot of mares and you want to be really sure, just have a bit of a game plan. Have um, Also have a little foaling box where you've got some gloves, some some soap, maybe some lube, a few towels, uh, some, some string. There's plenty of things on the internet, you know, foaling preparation boxes for owners. So they're the sort of things that can help you be prepared and uh, feel a bit more confident and secure about it all. So here we are again with Oliver. Oliver's got the mare in the crush. He's got the ultrasound machine on, his, on your left and he's going to use that ultrasound machine and the probe which the probe is going to be passed into the mare's backside, up her rectum and that probe is going to allow him to see all of the mare's, well, a large part of the mare's reproductive tract and have a look at the foal. Okay, so this mare's standing, she's on scales at the moment, she's a 540 kilo Australian stock horse mare. You can actually see the foal kicking in there at the moment. Uh, so it's a good sign that that foal's alive. we be having a little, doing a bit of play behaviour, having a bit of a canter around inside mum. But we're just going to, we've got this mare in a crush um, that she's pushed to the back of the crush with the chest bar in front of her. And uh, so we're just going to have a look here. We can see the vulva. There's uh, no discharge here. Nice and pink. Vulva is a little bit sloping. So this mare, as she has a few more foals, is probably going to need a castle to be stitched up to reduce the risk of getting infections travel forward and affecting the pregnancy. Now we're just going to gently uh, talk to this mare, put the hand up there and we'll evacuate any feces from the rectum. Have a look at the poo, we can see how she's been chewing. She's obviously got good teeth, she's got lots of very short fibres in there, nice normal consistency. up there so I can feel the foal in there just with my fingertips I'm tapping it on the head right now the mare's happy about me doing that I'm then going to cut the probe in my hand I'm going to cover this ultrasound up with that flap there just so that I can look in so I can look in here and I've got shade in here because if it's in the bright sunlight you can't see in there too well so we're going to use that and I'll actually have the owner come around and look in here so I can be showing the owner what's going on while, while we're actually scanning. So up we go with the probe and we can have a look at, we can see that there's no air in the vagina which is, which is good. You don't want air in the vagina. If you have got air in the vagina you know that that seal is not good and you've got, if you've got air going in there you've also got bacteria going in there which is going to be a risk to the pregnancy. We can see the bladder in there, we go forward, we can have a look at the cervix, we can see that the cervix has got no swelling in it, um, that it's got no fluid around it, that it's a normal size, it's nice and tight. We can then go forward and have a look at the actual placenta, um, the uterine placental zone and see that the placenta and the, and the uterus aren't thickened, they haven't got any signs of inflammation in them. I can see the foal's head there right now, I can see its eye, I'll just uh, see its eye there, come back we can have a look at the placental thickness and I can feel it moving so all, all's looking good on that front.
we can actually measure the thickness of the placenta using our ultrasound. And, uh, okay. and we'll have a bit, bit more of a look further as we go. We can also have a look at the fold via the abdomen and uh, we'll have to clip and put a bit of metho on there so we can have a bit more of a look at the fold if we're needing to get more evaluation that way. <coughs> There's the foal's eye. So the foal's head's right up near the cervix so he's thinking about, um, you know, he's preparing to get ready to come out, this little guy. So we've got the eye and up above the eye you've got uh, uterine wall and placenta as one and it's nice and thin, not, in, not uh, sort of wrinkly or thickened and we can go down a bit further and then actually have a look at other parts of the uterus. This mare's just straining a little bit so I'm not going to fight her too much. The placenta looks good there. She's just passing some wind, so I'm pushing back. You can see the bladder there. My hand's almost right out of the rectum, and I'll wait for her to settle again, and then I'll go forward and have another look. We're going forward again. So these often all look, I hear a lot of owners say, oh, it just looks like lots of grey and stuff, but when it just takes a little bit of skill and knowledge and experience and you start recognising what's normal and what's abnormal in here. Cord. Okay. Okay, here we're looking at a image of the uterine, the uterus and specifically the placenta as it attaches to the uterine wall. We're looking at it close to the cervix and you can actually see the infoldings of the placenta which is not quite normal for this stage and it's indicating that there may be a problem going on with that placenta which may require medication. You can also measure the thickness of the uteri placental thickness and that can be used to determine whether that placenta is, is uh, healthy or not and whether any other treatment is required. Also specifically looking at the quality of the placenta Okay, if your mare is in, in pregnancy and is developing a udder prematurely or running milk or has a discharge from the vulva, one of the things your vet will do is come out with the ultrasound machine and actually have a look at the uterus and the placenta and the pregnancy using an ultrasound probe inserted via the rectum and this is the sort of image that they will look at. They will look at here, you can see the utero placental wall together as one and as well as looking at the quality of the wall and how healthy it is you can also measure the thickness where you use the ultrasound and it can actually measure in tenths of a millimeter how thick that wall is and that will give you valuable information to tell you whether things are okay or things are not okay and your vet will be able to prescribe the appropriate treatment to try and improve the chances of getting a nice healthy foal on the ground and uh, hopefully all, all goes well.